Hello friend, welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky if you're new and today we are going to do an entire September garden tour. I haven't been out here in over a week so I don't know what I have in store for me today. I don't know what successes I'm gonna find and what might be struggling out here. I've got a basket, I've got my harvest apron on. Let's get right into it. Let's start with this bed right here. I haven't been out here in a week so I know that there are some pretty big projects that I need to dedicate this week to. So we're gonna harvest what we see that needs to be harvested and then I'm gonna make a list of things that I'm gonna do this week and projects that I need to tackle this week. But right off the bat, <laughs> I can already see there are a ton of tomatoes right here that need to be harvested. Look at that. This bed is my tomatillo, green bean, and pepper bed along with a ton of tomatoes along the backside. So let's see what abundance we can get out of this bed today. I planted 59-ish plants of tomatoes and that is more than enough for Josh and I to get through an entire year of tomato products because over the years I have been able to preserve tomatoes in multiple different ways and I don't go through all my preserves in one year. So next year I think I am going to cut back a little bit on the tomatoes and I am going to focus on some other things. I have already started a journal where I am starting to write down my thoughts on this year and my thoughts that I want to do going next year. I can go more into that after the growing season and I kind of have a full picture of how this garden went and what I plan to do moving forward. It has been a huge blessing the amount of produce that's come out of this garden this year. Not only have Josh and I been able to enjoy eating fresh produce for the last four months, but I've been able to gift a bunch of it to loved ones and I've been able to gift some to people in my local community, which has been a massive blessing. But there are a couple things that I do wanna do a little bit different next year. One thing I wanna do a little different is I wanna probably cut back on the amount of tomatoes I grow and I wanna increase. You can see on the right-hand side here, those are tomatillos. We're gonna harvest those in just a minute. I do wanna increase the amount of tomatillos I plant. I planted two different varieties of tomatillos by mistake. One of them produces a very large, plump tomatillo, and the other one is producing these really teeny tiny ones. And I need to go back and look at my seed packets. I don't want to plant the ones that do the little tiny, tiny tomatillos next year. I want to plant just the ones that produce the big, plump ones. And I'm probably gonna plant three or four times the amount of tomatillos I planted this year, next year. I haven't done anything really yet with the tomatillos. I have been collecting them and I've been washing them, peeling them and throwing them in the freezer. And then when the year is done and I have all my tomatillos harvested, I'm gonna go ahead and process those into salsa verde and into hot sauce. But I have not yet had a chance to do that. I figured I'd wait until all the tomatillos come in for the year. I can already tell that I need more than one basket for today's harvest. We are still on the first bed and we've almost filled the basket. My plan today wasn't necessarily to do a massive harvest. My plan was mostly to tour around and kind of come up with a plan for the for the week because last week was spent in the kitchen and I know that this week needs to be spent in the garden. But there was so much abundance that we end up doing a really large harvest on this day as well. So I end up going and grabbing a couple more baskets and we end up getting through the whole tour, but throughout the tour, there's a lot of goodies we find along the way. We are in for quite the harvest because all of that was just from this one bed. So now we're gonna come down here where we've got some pretty awesome things happening and some pretty big mishaps or not mishaps, but flops. The Atlantic giant pumpkins are ready to harvest. I'm not going to harvest those today, but those are looking pretty good. We've got two smaller ones here, and then we've got some other plants in here that are pretty diseased and are not looking super great. We have this banana squash here, and the plant is dying. This is shrivelly, and that's not going to produce anything. There's a couple over there that I think are producing okay. This plant here is a butternut squash. I think these will mature and we can get a good harvest off those. But this right here is a huge 
kind of flop. I've got melons in here and these are, here's my tag right here. I'm going to have to put the name up here because I can't really read that right now to let you know what kind of melons these are. And the plants are really diseased and not looking super great. There are some melons in here. I don't know if they're going to mature. Oh my goodness. I was going to say, I don't know if they're going to mature because these plants are just dying. But I just caught something out of the corner of my eye. Do you see that amongst all the dead and dying plant? I don't know if this melon is ready to be harvested. Do I cut it off the vine or not? I'm gonna smell it. Oh my goodness. It smells good. I think I'm gonna cut it off the vine. Look at that beauty. We're gonna have to go inside and give that a taste test at the end of this tour. It's soft right here from the arch, so it needs to be cut into whether it's ripe or not. My hopes and dreams for my melons was to have them grow on this arch, and clearly that did not happen. I'm not giving up on these arches. Next year I'm gonna plant other things on arches, and we're gonna see if I can have a beautiful romantic arch. Not the year for that. On this side of the arch, I planted some Kajari melons, those look like they're completely dead and didn't do anything. But other than, you know, this, there are a couple more melons in here that are not ripe. So I'm just gonna let them go and see what happens. But I'm pretty sure that is possibly the only melon I'm gonna get out of this these plants because they're pretty diseased. I'm probably gonna harvest the butternut squash in the next couple days. And then I've got these pumpkins here. And these plants are starting to look diseased too. Let's see. If you know, these actually might be ready to harvest. Usually, you know, a pumpkin's ready to harvest when the tendril shrivels and if you push on it with your fingernail, it doesn't leave an indent. So maybe when I harvest my pumpkins, those will be ready. So I've got two of those. And then these plants, I don't know what these are, but they're starting to grow and we'll see what happens, but they're starting to look pretty diseased too. Looks like there's another one in there, some sort of winter squash. I'm not gonna harvest any of the winter squash today. I'm gonna save that for a different day where we come out and harvest all the winter squash together. But I can already see in this bed down here that I have more summer squash to harvest. These Italian striped zucchinis have been so prolific for me. I can see another one in there. This year by far has been my absolute most prolific zucchini abundant and summer squash abundant year ever. This Italian striped zucchini has been so prolific along with this one right here, my white zucchini. But before we go down there to harvest those zucchinis, I wanna show you the rest of this bed. Some interesting things are happening in this bed. The first thing is this zucchini plant has powdery mildew, so it's starting to slow down its production, but it's still very productive. Clearly, I see two more baby ones in there. But I had planted in this bed red cabbage and a bunch of green cabbage, and I ripped out all the green cabbage because it was starting to sprout. I planted this cabbage in June, which is a terrible time to plant cabbage. The Red cabbage wasn't sprouting, so I just left it, and it looks like it's starting to grow, and actually it might start producing cabbage heads, versus the green cabbage was much more susceptible to the heat that we had in the summer. Cabbages is a cold weather crop. They like to be planted early, early, early spring and grown in the cooler weather, and clearly the green cabbage couldn't handle the heat as well as the red cabbage, so we might actually get some red cabbage. Here I have lettuce, and it is starting to sprout, so this means that it's going to flower and I'm going to harvest the seeds from this romaine once they produce seed here. So all of this is not much except for here. This is a sweet meat pumpkin plant and this produced this squash early, early on in the season. And then it produced this one and I didn't know if it would have time to actually grow this one out and it looks like it is going to have time to do that. And out of the corner of my eye right in here, I see squash bugs. Those are the first squash bugs I have seen this year and that is not good. This is why it's a problem if you wait a week 
to not come out into your garden because you start to get these really, really big zucchinis. I see more over here. This is the Italian striped zucchini. We already collected three zucchinis off just a few minutes ago. My mother-in-law is a gardener too, and she is growing zucchinis this year as well and is having the same type of harvest as I'm having with my zucchinis. And she was able to find a place where we can donate our excess zucchinis. So it's been super awesome and a huge blessing to Josh and I to know that our garden has been able to supplement our diet, our loved one's diet, and our community's diet. Even with all the, you know, in quote, failures of this garden or the things that didn't produce the way that I had intended them to, there are still a lot of awesome things coming out of the garden. Speaking of, this Italian white zucchini plant is almost done, but this carrot bed is thriving. I can't forget to bring that inside, but this is the carrot and onion bed. This is where I just harvested that zucchini and the onions are about ready to harvest, but the carrots, see if I can pull this one up. We've been, oh, that's a little one. Of course it's a little one. <laughs> We've been able to enjoy, oh my goodness, look at that. That's incredible. Yes, so this one's split, so I need to get out here and harvest all these this week. So that's gonna be on my list. That's gonna be a big project because it's this entire bed with the onions and carrots. So this is gonna be a big project to get these carrots and onions out along with, oh, let me show you these real quick. Here are these little, little decorative pumpkins. I'm gonna harvest these when we harvest all the winter squash because those are ready to be harvested. But we've got this bed as well that's carrots and onions. This is a different variety of carrot and they are looking just as good. Let's pull one out and see. I mean, look at that. That's incredible. So this week we'll get all the carrots and onions and here is a pumpkin that is ready to harvest. You can see the tendrils dying, the plant is dying and when I push on it, it's nice and firm. So this bed I'm excited to get to this week. Now let's go check on something that <laughs> I don't think that is going to produce anything. I've got my corn in here. Let's pull some of the, let's see. Okay, let's look in this. My corn has been something I didn't think was actually going to produce. I mean, this is little. I'm going to taste it. That is amazing. So I have little tiny ears of corn on here that tomorrow we're going to come out when we harvest a bunch of the pumpkins. We're going to harvest a bunch of the corn. Hey, it's not gonna be a crazy big corn harvest, but something is better than nothing. And that is one of the best corn cobs I've ever grown. So I'm gonna consider that a win. Here, right here, I have a fairy tale pumpkin plant. I actually have two plants. I have one there and there. And I've got two pumpkins on this one plant and over on this plant, there is one pumpkin that's just starting. I don't know if it's gonna have time to grow and produce a full size pumpkin. We're gonna give it a go. And let's look in here. So I grew pinto beans and it looks like there's a pinto bean. Oh, I don't wanna lose it. Look what 
looks like I have four pinto beans. These are pinto beans I planted from store-bought seed. So it looks like I need to come out here and get all these bean plants out when I harvest my corn. That is going to be so fun. I cannot wait to harvest that tomorrow and see what kind of harvest we get from that. So from the corn, we're gonna come over here and this is a winter squash bed, a kale bed. The kale's doing fantastic. Some of it is starting to get some aphid pressure on it. And the best way I have found to deal with aphid pressure is soapy water, just spray it on there and then wash it off really well. That takes care of it. I just need to come out here and do that, it looks like. On this side, we have more of the same kind of melon and those are looking pretty good. The plants look pretty healthy, but the winter squash on this side, again, are just looking diseased. I think, I don't know what kind of melon or pumpkins these are, I think, I don't know. I think that one will mature, but I've got one there. I don't think that one's gonna mature by the time winter comes and these plants are so diseased, but that's okay because I think when we get to the pumpkin patch over there, we're gonna have enough pumpkins for the year. So from this bed, which is where we just were, we're gonna come over here and this is where I have a ton of poblano peppers and I've got my five Chinese color peppers and some jalapeno peppers down there. One of the things I was gonna do was harvest all my peppers as soon as they produced the first set of peppers, hoping they would produce a second wave of peppers. And that has been working phenomenally. And these plants are looking the best they have looked all year. Our first frost is not until like the end of October. So I'm thinking I still have time to get quite a big pepper harvest, or at least that's what I'm hoping. On this one plant alone, we've got one, two, three, four, five poblano peppers that are pretty decent size. This poblano pepper I can harvest, that's beautiful. We've got a ton on this plant, I can harvest this one. Coming down, the plants are just huge. They're looking so much bigger than they looked this whole season. The Chinese five color pepper plants have tons of new flowers on and they're putting on new fruit, which is fantastic. And these jalapeno plants have tons of beautiful jalapenos on them. These tomato plants also along this back bed have so much fruit on them. Let me take a second and grab the tomatoes. I didn't grab enough boxes for all these tomatoes, so I'm gonna set them here until I run inside to grab some more boxes. 
So I'm just gently, gently, gently gonna lay them out here. All these tomatoes were from that one bed right there. So now we're going to come down here and talk about this bed since it's where we are. This is where we had potatoes that my dad and I harvested and I put this bed to bed for the year. What my dad and I did to put that bed to bed for the year is we harvested all the potatoes. We laid compost down. I amended it with soil amendments and then we covered it up and now it's ready to plant for next spring. So let's go up here. I can already see out of the corner of my eye. There's a ton of things for me to grab in this bed right here. This bed has cucumbers. That's what's kind of dangling down the ends of this bed. This is a Topentino squash and it's growing inches every day. I can watch this thing grow. It's super interesting. I've got some zucchini plants in here and it looks like, well, I thought I saw one that needed to be harvested. Maybe not. Oh, yep, yeah, there's one. Some of these I let get a little too big, like this one and this one. They're probably gonna be pretty bitter. I'll have to bring them inside and try them. If they're bitter, the chickens will really enjoy them. If they're sweet, Josh and I will enjoy them. So this bed has one Topachino squash growing there and then there's one growing on the other side. I've also got peppers here and those pepper plants look really great. So that's great. So let's see. There's my second one right there. I think you can eat these little like this as zucchini type plants, but I've got enough zucchini zucchini, so I'm gonna let these grow and see if I can get them to fully mature before frost. I have one, two, three Marconi peppers, and those are putting on a second flush of peppers. You can see right there, it's looking absolutely beautiful. From this bed, we're gonna pop up here and we've got our onions we're gonna harvest in the next couple days. We've got cabbage. You can see I harvested this one cabbage. I left the plant here and now it's starting to produce all these mini cabbages. I don't know if they'd be any good to eat. I'm just kind of letting them do their thing and experimenting. These are the same red cabbages I planted in early spring and they are just starting to put on heads. That one I could probably harvest, actually, that's pretty big. These ones are done. I just haven't taken them out of the garden. I probably should, because they're kind of ugly, but they're going to flower. So that one, the ones that have split are actually gonna produce a flower, I think. So I've thought a couple times I could come out here and rip that out, but I'm kind of curious to see what a cabbage flower looks like. So I've kind of just been letting them go to see what happens. So that's what we're doing. We're letting them go to see what happens. Let's head up here. Here I have more onions in front that are looking really good. And then I've got peppers in here that are putting on a second set of peppers. Oh, and that one looks perfect. You can put that in with all the extra cucumbers. Here's another jalapeno that looks really beautiful. I have some cannellini beans in here that I can harvest when I come out and harvest the corn. I'm going to harvest this. And then I've got my really small jalapeno plants. Well, the plants are looking really big, but the actual jalapenos these plants are putting on are so small. I'm not exactly sure why, but they taste really good. So I'll bring those inside too. I've got a lot more tomatoes. I'm going to harvest tonight off these plants. Some of them are starting to look a little diseased. I don't know why some of my tomato plants in this bed and that bed, 
that they just have not looked good the whole season, but it's okay because we've gotten enough tomatoes. And then here, my bell peppers, these are the king of the north bell peppers, and I am getting a lot of peppers off them. Just like before, I hard har harvested these, and they're putting on more flowers, and so I've been able to get quite a few big old peppers. So over here, you can see as well, here's another really big bell pepper. I could probably harvest that today, but I think I'm going to wait. And they're just all putting on a ton of flowers. Another big pepper. And so I think I'm going to get, oh my goodness, this plant has three really large bell peppers on it. That is probably one of the biggest bell peppers I've ever grown. I also have onions in this bed that have not done anything. They're super itty bitty, teeny tiny. And so I'll harvest them and I'll get some, but I don't think I'm gonna plant onions with my peppers again. I have no idea if it's because they're next to peppers or if it's, it's probably more likely because I didn't amend the beds. Here's a great example of where I amended the beds that the onions have exploded and why I'm gonna make sure my soil is highly amended or correctly amended before I plant my onions because onions are heavy feeders and I've always known that but this is a great example here of the difference of an amended bed where onions are growing and a non-amended bed where onions are growing. We were already in this bed earlier. This is where we have that cabbage that I harvested and I did not amend the bed here when I planted the onions. This was just the soil that I purchased and I put in these beds. I didn't put anything in them except for the soil that came with the beds and you can see how small these onions are as opposed to these onions. So here, I'll just harvest one so you can see. That's the onion, probably the size of a golf ball. And then I amended this bed because I pulled up the broccoli and cauliflower. I put a bag of compost and amendments well, I'm not going to pull that one up yet, but that's probably the size of a softball. And these are both yellow Spanish onions that I planted on the exact same day. And the onions up here that we were just looking at with the peppers, same company, non-amended beds. So my beds will be amended next year. From the bed we were just in with the peppers and onions, we're going to head over here. We've got more cabbages, Blue Lake bush beans. These have been the most prolific bush bean I have grown this year carrots, a second succession of carrots. My mini sunflowers are starting to grow, which is beautiful. And then I've got my pinto beans that are looking really nice. Not quite ready to harvest, but those are looking really good. And then I've got my cilantro here, and I'm going to be harvesting some of these seeds probably this coming week. Because I know that I have successfully in the past grown cilantro seed, harvested the seed, planted the seed, and grown it out. And I'm going to show you that in just a minute. So this bed is really beautiful. This was kind of the second planting in this bed of the year, and it's doing much better than the first planting. So from there, we've got this bed here, which is almost done for the season. This is the Roma tomato bed and celery bed. I harvested the celery once all the way to the ground, and they are growing back beautifully. I've been actually cooking a lot with this celery for fresh eating and putting in different recipes. So that's huge success. I'll get a bunch more celery off that. The Roma tomatoes are almost done. And then over here, this is what we're gonna be harvesting in the next couple days. You can see how the plants are starting to die back. And we've got a bunch of pumpkins that are ready to harvest. These ones right here, I've never grown before. And these are called, they're not fully ripe yet, but the plants are done. So I think I might have them ripen off the vine. These are called, I don't know how to pronounce that, Muscate Province Pumpkin. And I have so many of them. I have one, two, three, four of them. And they're just starting to turn colors. I was really hoping they would change color a little bit quicker, but they're definitely slow to the game. I've got two Cinderella pumpkins, one there and here that's ready to harvest. This plant all of a sudden decided to put on a bunch more fruit. It put on this pumpkin right here and that one. That one 
did not get fully pollinated, I don't think, because it's rotting. But I think that this one is going to mature in time. I wasn't sure if it was going to because it came on about four or five weeks after this one started growing, and it looks beautiful. That one, too. So those two. So I had three. These two were the first ones to put on, and then those three, and obviously that one didn't take. I wasn't sure if those two were going to make it, and I think they're going to. I have always had the best luck growing Cinderella pumpkins. They are the most prolific. They've always been the easiest to grow and I've always had success. So I probably will always have Cinderella pumpkins in my garden because it feels like a good win. They're a little bit more watery than like a sweet meat. Sweet meat was that first green pumpkin we were looking at up before. Those are one of my favorites because the, the meat is dense and rich and creamy but I've never had as good of luck. I got, I got one, maybe two <laughs> off that one plant versus this one I have one, two, three, four that are huge. So you just have to cook it down a little bit longer and then you can use it just like any pumpkin. And then I've had success with these other two varieties of pumpkin. This right here, these are Long Island cheese pumpkin. And these right there, are Cinderella, not Cinderella, fairy tale pumpkins. So I've got those three. Oh no, I have four. No, one, two, three. And then it just put on this fourth one that's still green. So this has been very awesome. This is the best pumpkin year I've ever had. And I'm really excited to try some of these new varieties of pumpkins. I've never grown. The only varieties of pumpkins I've grown before that are in my garden this year are the sweet meat and the Cinderella. So the rest of these varieties are brand new and I'm really excited. This, this part of the garden's looking a little bit sad now because the plants are starting to die back, but it means that progress is being made. So here is where we had the potatoes. We harvested the potatoes and then I came through and planted cauliflower with lettuce in between the cauliflower. And this is looking beautiful. I'm using some comfrey as living mulch. And then I have six cabbages here. Those are looking great. I've got broccoli here and cilantro. So the cilantro, this is the seed that I had saved from last year's garden and it's looking beautiful. So I need to come through and replant some of it. So in the areas where it's super dense, I could try to get some where it's a little less dense. And it looks like some of my broccoli went to seed. It was 90 degrees yesterday. I'm gonna try this, it might be terrible. Tastes like broccoli. It's a little bitter, but that's broccoli. Okay, these are beautiful. Oh my goodness, look at these. Orange is not my favorite color, but these orange zinnias this year are really blowing me away. These zinnias were originally pretty stunted because of the potatoes, but since the potatoes have come out, they're just looking phenomenal. From this bed, we've got this bed, and I went ahead and planted green onions where I had the black beans, and then I came out and I planted some Oregon, no, those are sugar snap peas along the back side of this trellis. And it looks like I'm getting good germination. So this is the first time I've been out here since they've germinated, so that's really encouraging. And then I wanted to show you one thing here that I noticed the other day. This is a black bean plant. So this is where I had the black beans. And what must have happened here is a black bean must have fallen and planted itself. Oh, look, there's a bunch more right there too. That is super encouraging because what that's telling me is that I harvested the black beans at a good time, that they were fully mature and viable seed. So when I take some of those seeds and I save them, the ones that we're not gonna eat, and I wanna plant next year, I am pretty confident that they are viable and so that they will grow next year, which is really great. So from this bed, let's come up here. Oh my goodness. We've got our zucchini and sunflower bed. The sunflowers are almost done for the season. And so are the zucchini. It looks like I've got one right here. But something I wanted to show you is, this is some echinacea that I had planted this year. We started this seed together back in March. Typically, echinacea does not bloom 
its first year, but I am getting some blooms off of this. I can also tell that these plants, the squash plants are almost done for the year. So I'm gonna be taking this up here pretty soon. I'm gonna probably get a couple more squash off of it. And then I'm gonna call this bed done for the year. Look how beautiful the sunflowers and the zinnias together are. I've got a cucumber plant here that's almost done for the year as well. And then we still have a ton of cilantro. And here's another zucchini or summer squash. And another one. Oh my goodness. And another one. But again, the cilantro on this side of the bed, because it is on the north side, it's been shaded all winter, or summer, not all winter, and it still tastes absolutely delicious. That is something I'm gonna take note of for following years because we've been able to have pico de gallo with homegrown onions, tomatoes, and cilantro, and jalapenos as much as we want, which is typically very difficult to have your onions, tomatoes, and your cilantro all ripe at the same time. Because normally the cilantro is long done and bolted by the time those other things come and are harvestable. So that's just really cool. I'm hoping to try to replicate that for next year. Now this is something I've been wanting to share with you because I've been able to see this for the last week from my house. And that's these black beans. This was a different variety of black bean. I did not realize I was planting a pole bean <laughs> until they started growing. And you can see they're starting to grow up this trellis and down this bed. In here, we've got peppers as well. And these pepper plants are starting to produce quite a few peppers. So this is really encouraging. This has definitely been the best pepper year I've ever had. Going into this gardening year, some of the bean, dried bean plants that I planted, I didn't know if they were bush bean or pole bean. It's kind of crazy that some seed packets don't say whether they're plants or pole beans or bush beans. And it does make a big difference on how the plants act. So knowing that in the beginning of the growing season is super important. So I'm hoping that I'm gonna be able to get a harvest off these bean plants before frost. They haven't put on any of their pods yet. I don't even see flowers on them yet. They're still growing just the plant. And so I'm hoping I get a harvest because now I know that the pinto beans I planted are pole beans so I can save those seeds. I know these are pole beans. If I get seed, I'm going to save the seed. And I've already started to plan out next year's garden. I am not a gardener who plans a lot in the past, but this next year I've got so many big ideas of where I want to put things, what I want to do to maximize this garden and to try to get even more out of this garden and more varieties. So obviously I got a lot of zucchini and a lot of tomatoes this year, but I'm really hoping to get a bigger harvest of a bunch of other variety of things as well. And so this first year has been so awesome, just learning this garden, learning the sun patterns and seeing what I can do. The biggest thing I learned was amending the beds is so important and it's just been so incredible, the abundance coming out of this garden and hopefully we get an abundant bean harvest. Along the back side of this bed, you can see a little better that the beans are starting to grow even above the trellis. I've got tomatoes that I need to harvest off this bed and we were already in this bed. This is one of the tomato and pepper beds. I've got a ton of tomatoes here I need to come grab. I have never had so many birds in my garden before and I'm really trying to encourage that because I think that has helped with the bug pressure and it's been so incredible. It's been not only incredible them taking care of a lot of the bug pressure for me, but just enjoying their presence in the garden with them. Now I need to go through this garden and collect all the goodies that I have set down everywhere because I have baskets and baskets and not baskets of produce laying all over this garden and I've got a whole apron full. Once we get all of this beautiful produce inside, we are going to give that melon a try that we harvested at the beginning of this harvest and see how well we were able to do. This is the very first melon I've ever grown and I am so incredibly proud of it. Even though I had six plants of this one particular melon and we only end up getting this one melon off of it when we end up doing the pumpkin harvest, 
I end up pulling the other plants because they're so diseased. I just don't think they were going to do anything. So they end up going to the chickens and the chickens enjoy eating the unripe melon. But there is something so empowering about trying a new variety of something and having success. I'm considering getting one melon off six plants a success because last year I planted melons for the very first time ever and I didn't even get any of the melon seeds to germinate. So the fact that we were able to get the melons to germinate and we got one melon is a huge win. Maybe next year we will get a bumper crop of melons. So we're going to collect all the goodies. Now this arch trellis you can kind of see on the left hand here. I have two arch trellises in my garden and they did not the, the vision I had for them was them to be filled with beauty and lush green and abundance. That did not happen. So next year, I'm going to look at some other different varieties and I'm going to try to get those arch trellises to be filled and beautiful. And we will see if we can have that come to fruition. If you guys have any suggestions on what you have had what varieties of different things have grown really well in your gardens on an arch trellis. I am all ears. I am thinking of putting some winter squash on one of them and maybe pole beans or some tomatoes, like a vining grape tomato or something like that. Let's go ahead and cut into this melon and give it a try. Oh, it's very soft. Oh, my pup wants to try it too. Oh my goodness. Okay, it looks right. I almost think it might be a little on the overripe side, but it's hard to know until we give it a try. Very juicy, it smells incredible. This is huge, because I've never done this before, grown a melon. Cheers. All right, let's give this a try. It tastes like a cantaloupe. It tastes like a cantaloupe. Now what I need to do is go through all this produce. I need to get the tomatoes laid out. I need to get the peppers, tomatillos, green beans, cucumbers, zucchini in the refrigerator. And we are going to then process a lot of these goodies. Some of the goodies are gonna be donated. Some of them I'm gonna turn into things for Josh and I to enjoy over the winter. That cantaloupe was fabulous. So thank you for being here as we did our September garden tour and kind of saw where we're at right, right now and what needs to be done. Big projects coming up out there. We need to clean up some of the beds, get them ready for winter. We need to harvest the corn tomorrow, the onions, the carrots. And there's a lot, a lot out there. There's still more tomatoes out there. I just happened to get this, many, this two baskets of tomatoes today. So thank you for being here. If you wanna watch more of my videos, I'll pop them there. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time.